Yo, what's shaking, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That's on War Richardson. Today, in contrasting gear, like I feel yeah. like some days we show more times than not, we always have the same color on. It's really strange. Today, it stands out. He's got black on, I've got white on. And we're going to be talking about probably one of the top five most popular topics i think in texas football right now uh justice finkley the freshman newcomer from alabama and what exactly he means to this program before we do that though do us a solid like this video at some point over the course of the next 10 or 15 minutes subscribe to the channel you can just click on a button and it's right underneath the video get notifications do all of that stuff on war i I brought up Justice Finkley to you yesterday because I had him as a potential Monday overreach. Had I written a 10 thoughts from the weekend on Sunday instead of taking that day off and having Alex write it for orangebloods.com, if you're not on the website, go check it out. I would have written about this, I think, with Finkley in that, you know, he doesn't come in with a five-star resume. He's not that highly recruited. But I wonder if he's still not pretty close to elite of the elite as like maybe he's not national top 25, but maybe he's national top 50. But you know who else was kind of national top 50? Xavier Worthy was. Hmm. And if Justice Finkley with a spring to work with is really that talented, it really changes the face of what this Texas defense can potentially be and do in year one. We know that from an edge rusher standpoint, that they've got to find somebody that can get to the quarterback, not even from just that position. They've got to find a pass rush. And when I'm looking at the current roster, while there's still some hope that Texas can go into the portal, if you're looking at who on the roster currently has a chance to be maybe an impact player, I just have this sneaking suspicion that he might be the best answer for that question. And if so, it makes the next two to six months of development through the off season and through, through spring workouts, he's as important as any player in this program. Cause if he can answer some of that, you can start to see how this defense really takes a step forward going into next season. And then Maybe that's how eight and three or eight and four and, or turns into nine and three in, in a mm -hmm. world where Texas fans want Texas to compete for a Big 12 championship. You got to have dudes that make impact plays on defense. And he feels like the kind of guy that I think might have some of that in him as a true freshman. Yeah, because catch the, one of the issues that this defense had last year was just the inability to stop people, uh, especially in the second half when you really needed to do that. And, you know, we, we saw a defense that, wasn't even really even able to rattle effectively catch backup quarterbacks. And so, you know, you've, you know, when you, you've got to have a defensive line. Any quarterback. Any quarterback. Like back, that, that Kansas kid was like third string. He was, yes. He, and he, he, he had the game of his life. Like he'll, you know, he'll, that will be his Al Bundy moment. What is it? The five touchdowns yes. at Polk High. Six touchdowns at Polk High. Yes, that, that will be his moment there. And so they need a guy catch who can, you know, effectively, like to your point, uh, one, I think, put some life into the, what this into this defense. There was a sometimes catch where it just seemed like sometimes they were going through the motions at time on defense. So I think having some young energy, some young juice uh, would definitely help. And, you know, that's a, something that Justin potentially brings. He looks like, you know, catch, you know, one of the things that, I think is a big point of emphasis now um, is having guys who are, are college ready. And he's a guy that looks like he's college ready. You know, this, the whole like waiting three years to develop four years ago, they, they want guys to come in like really, really soon, like one or two, like these coaches, they got, you know, four years to wait for you to develop. Like you, you've got your one or two year window. And then after that, you know, how many times have we did shoulder shrugs and there's a, you know, whatever happened to you, who is this? And if he can come in and provide something on that edge that they so desperately need, uh, whether it's, you know, whether it's getting the pass rush, whether it's getting to the passer, whether it's, you know, hurries, like something to that effect and inject some juice, 
with, you know, whatever, you know, PK is trying to do with what Gary Patterson will add uh, to that defense. Yeah, catch. Now you're you're talking about the difference of you know if, you, if Texas has a defense, think of a good defense, not great, just good. What does last season look like from a win loss perspective? This you probably add in a few more wins, and so yeah. So for us to go from a seven win, maybe eight win thought process to get it up to where you're talking about and really being in contention for game in the games of November, meaningful games. A guy like Justice Finkley could, you know, if, if you tell me today Justice Finkley is one of the better players on the defense in, in 2022, I say to you, this is probably easily a nine to 10 win team, easily, easily as the floor. Do you, I got to be honest, I don't know how I didn't, either I just forgot or I didn't know this. Do you know who led the team in sacks last year and with how many? I believe the number was like two. 2.5. 2.5. So I know I, I got the number. I got to remember the player. I want to like, get it. I think it was Ovi. It was Ben Davis. Ben, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Texas leading sacker last year was Ben Davis with 2.5. Only Alfred Collins had two, Demo had two. Ovi had two, Byron Murphy had two. Mm. They had those dudes got to the quarterbacks once every month and a half. Tackles for loss. Jalen Ford led the team with six. Joseph Osai had six against Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Like this was a Texas team. Oh, and just one more little stat: force fumbles. The entire defense for seven fumbles last year, nobody had more than one, which means, and again, a force fumble doesn't mean they created a turnover. You can get a force fumble and the offensive guy recover the fumble. Mm -hmm. They forced seven fumbles, which means once every two games, essentially, they had somebody on the defense that punched the ball out. This is a team, when we talk about, we spend way too much time talking about the offense because Quinn Ewers is exciting to talk about. And so is Xavier. So is Bijan. Hell, the second and third best receivers on this team are kind of exciting to talk about. We could do videos on Nayor and Whittington all day long and have no issues with it. This defense was atrocious. In the 25 years I've been covering Texas football, that has to be both the lowest number of sacks for a team leader and the lowest number of tackles for loss as a team leader. And unless there was a year where they didn't force any fumble, it doesn't get lower than one. So in all these impactful big plays, Texas was non-existent. That is embarrassing. I feel like you and I, if we, if we lined up, we probably get hurt pretty easily, but we can also accidentally fall into a play. And it feels like Texas on defense last year made plays accidentally. Yeah. Oh, oops. I sacked the quarterback. Can't let that happen for another seven weeks. This is a team that needs justice Finkley to, to like blow up almost as bad as it needs Quinn Ewers because boy, if it's not Finkley, you know, one of the problems is, you know, we, we were talking about a guy like Jamon Tapp last week behind the scenes. He didn't come in early. Your expectations for guys that arrive in August can only be so high. Correct. Finkley gets eight months to prepare for August workouts, and that's not insignificant. It makes – because beyond him, I don't know who else the candidates are. But it makes Tory Becton really important there. That's got to be Becton's special project. And if we get to September and Finkley's playing like a guy who's a junior or a senior, and that's a huge ask, mm -hmm. right? Be an elite, be like, be the Xavier worthy equivalent, or at least some version of that, a seven out of 10 version of 70% of Xavier. Do that on defense. And this team suddenly, 
is has a playmaker and that in itself makes a huge difference i think we've we've wondered about becton's importance in the program and how do you even gauge how successful a strength and, co and conditioning coordinator is i'll go so far as to say for me finkley is a isolated instance get that dude ready and if finkley looks like a 21 year old as an 18 year old in his first season, I'm gonna give Becton a lot of credit for that because there just aren't many guys that have the ability to potentially become the kind of player that we're talking about. He's one of them. And if he doesn't do it, I'm left in a world where suddenly, I don't know who's getting this team three or four sacks unless, do we think Ovi takes it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm mm -hmm. just not as optimistic about the other guys on the roster as I am about the new guy. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting when you, catch, when you start talking about back then and, the, and it really kind of resonated as far as what the importance of this offseason really is because it's almost like, you know, it's to borrow an, an old analogy, it's almost like all the pieces of the puzzle are on the table. Uh, the, you've got the quarterback who's, who's in the room. You've got the running backs who are there. You've been able to – they were able to successfully recruit – on the offensive line, tight end room is stacked and it went, you know, and it added to that. The DBs for the most part should be solid and to go out and get a guy like Ryan Watts to bring him in. And then, you know, the linebackers, maybe there's a little bit question there, you know, maybe we'll see what they can do from the transfer portal. Um, and then your defensive linemen, who are they able to sign? And it's, and again, it's like, I view Justice Finkley as one of those pieces of the puzzle where you look at it and say, man, if you could put all this together, yeah, you know, all, all the videos that we're going to we would talk about this season and next year catch and off season would be all the positive videos that everybody wants because from it's there in the, in the development of Justin Finkley, I think is, is, is key, you know, to what this defense is. And, and people will say, well, you know, what about the other guys? Well, sometimes guys who are, are what they are, Right, catch. And sometimes being in a program four or five years doesn't always mean you be you you leave as the absolute best player to play the position. Sometimes it just means you were here for four or five years. It just is what it is. You know, we had we saw, you know, the other year catch with, you know, there were super seniors, and we didn't necessarily think that because they, you know, those guys had a sixth year exactly. that suddenly, oh my God, like um, imagine how dominant these guys are gonna be. We just thought, oh, well, there's another year. That Adjust is so true. Yeah, it it's really so true. Go ahead. What'd you say? No, I, I was just saying that I think you make a really good point that it, it's why I'm like, hey, what you want, like, and nobody looked at Xavier Worthy and was like, oh man, like that guy started making plays. It was, it was pretty like self-explanatory that he was going to be a really good player. And you no longer needed to talk about him and his classification other than to say nobody in the history of the program has ever done this at this young of an age. But, you know, it was only because he was breaking records. If, if, the, if he wasn't breaking records, but had still been doing the same thing, I think the freshman part of it becomes an afterthought at about the midway season. He's just really freaking good. And I think that Texas boy, they could use a guy like that on defense. Yeah. The guy that just from the moment he shows up and you get three years out of it where – He's just one of the best players on your defense. And was the last guy who the defense defense that came in and you said catch was had that kind of impact as a freshman? Who a great question because I thought about Malik Jefferson as I was talking, and mm -hmm. he wasn't that guy that I and, and, and he was supposed to be. And mm -hmm. I'm a huge Malik Jefferson defender, especially when you look at his last year at Texas, where he was really freaking good. And he had one of the best linebacker seasons that Texas has seen, but he didn't show up like that. Who's the last guy to just show? I think a lot of people thought BJ Foster was going to be that guy. I think Caden Stearns was probably that guy for six weeks. Yeah. First six weeks of his freshman season, he looked like a guy that you go, oh yeah, no, he's going to start for the Broncos as a rookie. Of course he is. But boy, I don't know. Like I have, 
Malcolm maybe Brown. somebody like Malcolm Brown. Yeah, I was gonna say, who would have yeah. come in as a five-star defensive lineman, and almost from the very beginning when he was on the field, you you thought to yourself, that guy's just different than mm-hmm. everybody. But yeah, you. I mean, you know, that's almost a decade. So yeah. when I talk about that, Justice Finkley's a guy that this program needs more of. We don't do that on offense. We can find freshmen that even a guy like Zach Shackelford, right, could come in and mm-hmm. be good. Like, not terrible, I guess. I mean, yeah. come in and start games and, and, and play. I mean, we've seen it happen with the offensive line. We've seen it happen, I think, at various positions. We saw it with Bijan. We've seen it with Xavier. Uh, you know, we've probably seen it not at quarterback, but like, yeah, whatever. We've seen it happen on offense. Defense, it feels like they've been waiting a long time for a guy like that. And I'll just wrap it all this up by saying, going all the way back to the very beginning of this video, the reason why we're having this exact conversation and why I was going to make it a Monday overreaction video, I think he might be that kind of dude. and. I hate to build up the hype. You know what I mean? Like, let this kid have a spring practice first. Let him get through an off season. But you know what? Behind the scenes, they're promoting the hell out of this guy. He's front and center on their social media campaign. They want to show him lifting weights. I feel like inside the program, there's a buzz that he might be special special in the way that we're talking about they haven't had in a long time. And I feel a lot better about this defense in general. If you tell me he, he has six sacks, you tell me that guy has six sacks and 12 tackles for loss next season. And it makes me immediately think to myself, that is something they did not have a year ago in any shape, form or capacity. And now I see, a light at the end of the tunnel for this defense as it does a lot of things to try to get better. Having good players helps like bring Mm -hmm. Gary Patterson in, bring in analysts, have coaching continuity. All that stuff's great. You know, it's better. Badass talent. They need a little bit of that. He might be just that. If you give me that stat line today, one, I would take it Two, I would say that, Texas is either at no, Texas is finishing no less than third in this conference with the potential of going higher because now you're telling me this defense has found a way to have an impact, um, especially in conference games. And I would say, in, in the ways to your point, catch you're talking about one one guy stat line being the combination of like what three guys were able to produce you know, last season, you're you top me, three guys. <laughs> so you're telling me you're going to get out of one and then they just continue to do what they do. Then I'm like, Oh, all right. Texas is making some noise. So uh, it, will, it will be interesting to, 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 to continue to follow him. About it's the why season. I thought that I won the draft that we did. Yeah. Cause I, I think Finkley is potentially when we'll look back, it'll be catch got Bijan and like, Maybe nobody will notice anything else, but the Finkley part of that may be the thing that I think stands out in in nine months' time. Look, if you've enjoyed the video, if you love the Justice Finkley discussion, like it, subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff. Uh, By all means, subscribe to the channel because Anwar and I will be back tomorrow. Uh, If not him, it'll be me and Ari. Like, I'm not exactly quite sure Wednesdays. Jason and I are doing a Vince Young recruitment video. Oh, before this week is over, where we go back through the re- like the evolution of his recruitment 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And but I promise there will be surprises in that on war that Texas fans have blocked out of their minds, don't remember and will be shocked by when we go back through it uh, later this week. I think you guys are really going to like this new series of videos that we're doing. But hey, for today, for Anwar Richardson and myself, you guys have a fantastic Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, whatever day of the week you're watching this video, because in theory, you could be watching this in July and it could be any day of the week. Have a great rest of the day. You guys be good to each other and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Later.